Hey, let's talk about food here. Mac and cheese diet, sound familiar? Chicken nuggets only, mm -hmm. right? That, that kind of phase? For nearly a decade, these are the only foods a teenager from Bristol has eaten. Parents deal with picky eaters at the dinner table, but when does it need a doctor's attention? Children and adults refusing to eat certain Strictest foods. Strictest diet that lacks so many Using essential to eat vitamins. But popsicles. As Dr. Everett says, anxiety was an underlying condition. some research on a new condition uh, called ARFID, uh, which stands for, it's a complex, uh, it's a complex name, but it stands for Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder. Uh, and this is a condition that affects uh, children, adolescents, and adults across all ages. Um, and we're just starting to learn more about what these patients really look like. Um, it's a relatively new diagnosis. It's only been in the DSM-5, which is the Diagnostic Statistical Manual for Mental Health Conditions has only been recognized since 2013. And it's an eating disorder, but it differs from other disorders like anorexia and bulimia in that it's not linked to body image at all. I was jumping around because I normally do that when I'm eating, but then I choked, then I was just scared to eat again. Everyone who has ARFID experiences it differently. Some people are really sensitive to textures and colors. Some people don't have an appetite. Some people eat really slowly or in really small portions, etc. And you had to go through your whole school life, essentially what, being told that you were fussy. Um, and sadly, those those people quite often children have uh, been just labeled as fussy eaters. But with the recent uh, diagnosis and uh, sort of classification and um, ARFID appearing in the DSM, it's starting to get a bit more traction and it's starting to get noticed. But well, the first time that it was recognized as a, as a diagnosable condition was May of this year. <laughs> May of this year is when I was I officially received my diagnosis. So essentially 30 years of your life, you've yeah. been told that you are a fussy eater. Obviously isn't fun. I'm terrified of going on trips or studying abroad because if the food is something that I don't eat then I'll just like starve all the time and I won't make a big deal out of it because I don't want to cause a scene and I don't want people to pity me so I'll just be like oh I'm not hungry and I'll just deal with it and it sucks. A restrictive diet that lacks so many essential vitamins by the age of 17 he was going deaf and blind. It's not as if the family didn't try to introduce fruit and vegetables. So vitamin B12 deficiency when visual problems. A markedly reduced bone mineral density and vitamin D level. Poor nutrition. And he was lacking other important minerals such as copper and selenium. Ever since I can remember, our fit has been this crashing wave coming over me. Every day is a constant struggle of going back to the shore and being pulled back into the high tide with absolutely no morning. Nearly every day the question of what are we having for dinner will break my mind and sometimes I'll know what's for dinner and it's a food that I can't handle and I'll have terrible anxiety before the meal and I'll go into a panic attack and it'll just be a whole huge mess that just really makes me feel bad. <laughs> um, the constant judgment from my family and extended family only adds to this stress and I'm often ashamed because of this disorder, this, this monster that I just I can't control. 